Okay, so in this video, we're going to derive a demand curve when we have a Cobb Douglas utility function and a budget constraint. We'll start by writing the Lagrangian for this because we need to maximize u at uh, every different value of p1 and uh, p2. So we can write Lagrangian equals q1 to the 0.5, q2 to the 0.5 and then plus lambda times, and remember we can write this as 0 equals 12 minus p1 q1 minus p2 q2. So we'll plug this in, 12 minus p1 q1 minus p2 q2. And this will be our Lagrangian for every p1 and p2 value. So uh, we're going to try and find the demand curve for uh, good number one here. And so we're going to want to try and find what quantity of good one we'll have at different prices of good one. So let's start out just with P1 equal to 1 and P2 equal to 1. This means our Lagrangian becomes q1 to the 0.5, q2 to the 0.5, plus lambda times 12 minus q1 minus q2. And we can take the partial derivative in each case here. Uh, so partial derivative for q1 gives us 0.5 to the q1, negative 0.5, q2 to the 0.5, and then minus lambda, and remember we're going to set each of these partial derivatives equal to zero. For partial derivative of q2, we get 0.5 q1 to the 0.5, q2 to the negative 0.5, and again a minus lambda equals zero. And for partial derivative of lambda, we get 12 minus q1 minus q2 equals 0. And so for this, uh, we can divide the partial derivative of q1 over the partial derivative of q2. And so when we do this, we'll get q2 over q1 equals 1 because we take these lambdas to the other side. And so when we do this, we can see that q2 equals q1, and so we can plug this into our budget constraint and get 12 equals q1 plus q2, which equals 12 equals 2q1, and q1 equals 6, and so q2 will also equal 6. So for P1 equals 1 and P2 equals 1, we have 6 for the quantity of good 1 and the quantity of good 2. Now we're going to have to try and change the price of good 1 and see how that affects the quantity. So for the second point, we're going to have P1 equal to 2, and we're going to have P2 stay the same and be equal to 1. And this will change our Lagrangian slightly. And we'll still have this q1 to the 0.5, q2 to the 0.5. But now we'll have lambda 12 minus 2 is now the price of good 1 times q1, and still minus q2. And this will give us slightly different partial derivatives. And uh, we can divide them. And we actually get. Um, q2 over q1 equals 2. Again, that's the same process as we did last time. And then, of course, we get the budget constraint of 2q1 plus q2. And so we can say q2 equals 2q1. And plugging that in uh, to the budget constraint, we get 4q1. So q1 equals 3. And q2 if we plug it in, 
it equals 2 q1 so q2 equals 2 times 3 equals 6 now finally we're going to have uh, we're just going to change the price again. This time price 1 will go to 3. Price 2 can stay at 1 because we're only trying to find the demand curve for good 1. And again, this changes the Lagrangian to Q1, 0.5, Q2 to the 0.5, plus lambda, 12, minus 3, because that's the price of good 1, Q1 minus Q2. And we can get the partial derivatives divide them again and get q2 over q1 equals 3 so q2 equals 3 q1 and q2 or and our budget constraint will be 12 equals 3 q1 plus q2 so we know q2 equals 3 q1 12 equals 6 q1 so q1 equals 2, and q2 equals 3q1, so q2 will equal 6. Now we have uh, three separate points with different prices and different quantities for good one. Okay, so I've added this little graph here just so we can finish up by graphing our points. Uh, and in our first set of price 1 and quantity 1, we get, uh, when the price is 1, we have 6 quantity 1. And then in our second point here, we have we have quantity 1 equals 3, and we have price 1 equals 2, so we can graph that. And finally, we have price 1 equals 3, and quantity 1 equals 2. So we can connect these, and we see we get a nice downward sloping demand curve, which is exactly what we should have.